Hey guys, um, it's been a really long time since I've actually made one of these tutorials, but uh, I'm getting back to making one today. Um, today we're going to be talking about something called a switch statement or block. Um, it's not necessarily pivotal that you understand, well, it's kind of important that you understand them, but it's not totally necessary that you actually use them in your own code. Because basically it's just a way to decrease the amount of typing you have to do. Um, so it's up to you how important that is to you. Uh, basically, okay, here, let's let's make an integer. I'll, yeah, and we'll set that equal to like 3. So let's say we want to take different actions depending on if 1 or n is 1 or if n is 2 or if n is 3 yeah. or if n is 4 or lastly if n is 5 so we have all these different actions that we want our program to take depending on the value of n so I don't know, let's see out n is 1 see out n is 2. There might be a more, I mean, I'm sure there is a more efficient way to do this than having all these uh, L if, else if, else if, just when it's basically outputting the same thing, but whatever, we're not talking about that. I'll, I'm just going to be showing you a way that kind of will simplify this uh, if, else if, else if kind of structure and make it uh, easier to type out. So let's take a look at this now. Well, I mean, you should still you should be able to follow this pretty good. We're not seeing anything new here. Okay, so n is three, and then if we changed n to like five, then it would say n is five. Okay, so not so bad. But the thing is, if you look at these else ifs, else ifs all of these are pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is this one number way on the right hand side. So is there a way that we could tell our program that you know this is going to be the same for all of these so you don't have to type it out every time I guess would be kind of the advantage here. And the way that you do that is you use a switch statement. So what you do is you type switch and then in these parentheses you put an integer. It has to be an integer. So let's put n in there. And then in the switch statement we have all these little case blocks. So we have case 1 and then I don't think it's strictly necessary that you make a block but I figure why not. I don't really use switch statements all that much um, which is partly why I neglected to talk about them until now because you know really they're pretty simple it's not like we needed to know about dynamic memory allocation or classes or anything but you know I don't really use them that much but here's here's what goes on this basically is the same as our if n equals 1 else if n equals 2 else if n equals 3 4 5 so now in these blocks we put um, n is 1 and down here, we put n is 2. And I am doing something wrong here, which I'll be showing you in a second. Um, so if you already know about switch statements and are wondering what I'm doing, I am aware that I'm making a mistake. But um, I will correct it. I'm just doing this to show you uh, what, you know, what may seem intuitive is not actually correct. So this seems right. Uh, if n equals 1, n is 1, else if n is 2, n is 2. So let's try this out using our switch statement instead of our else ifs. And we got n is 5. So that makes sense because this was 5, but if we set this to like 3, then we get n is 3, n is 4, n is 5. All we wanted was n is 3. And if we set this to 1, then we get 
we get all five and is one is two three four five so obviously that's not optimal we don't want all of this all of these blocks to be getting executed so the thing is with switch statements you have to put in these breaks at the end of every case or else it'll just continue going through each case I don't really know why it doesn't really make sense to me why it does that but you know gotta do what you gotta do you add in break at the end of every case and that way uh, it'll it'll stop it from going you know it'll, if it if n is one it's not gonna execute two three four and five so now we should only get n is one right so now if we make it three we should only get n is three okay so that's pretty much it uh, we're just gonna show a switch structure statement and uh, how it works and keep in mind it always it only works with integers so it can be useful when you're having like a menu like way back when we did rock paper scissors when we had you know pick a choice number one rock number two paper number three scissors it might have simplified that a little bit but I don't know I, I personally prefer if else if because it's more explicit to me though you'll no doubt come across switch structures if you look at other people's code and stuff so yeah that's it for this video guys uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye